So my name is uh, Julie Moon. Um, I'm from the Folklore Movement. So it's an um, association of people, of faithful, to really try to put gospel into practice. And in, in the movement, there are many, all kinds of vocations. Um, so like, like me, who give my life to God, you know, who's lay, who is lay consecrated, but as well as the families and then youth and religious, and then also uh, our, as our specific goal of our movement is May They Will Be One, we um, have um, like members, not only from the Catholic, but also uh, other Christian denominations and then other, reli other religions and as well as non-believers, right? So they're all walks of people uh, in this uh, lay ecclesia movement, right? It's, we try to, to create a family. In uh, the focolare means, uh, it's an Itali Italian word, uh, it means like fireplace. So what it happened was that, you know, when Gera Lubick started the movement, people started visiting the Focolare house. And then when they went there, they felt such a warmth, right? So they start uh, saying that, oh, I've been to the Focolare, you know, fireplace, when, where you get the, the warmth, warmth of love. So it became like a nickname, like the Focolare and the, the Focolare. And then it became actually the official name of the movement, but uh, we were approved as the work of Mary, that's our official name. So um, I could say there were two decisive moments that I understood my vocation, and then that was first time I went to visit the Folklore House in my city. I'm originally from South Korea. And then there, uh, when I enter that house, I was so touched by this uh, divine atmosphere. And then at the time, I didn't know what it was. But later, I understood that, you know, since they, are, they tried to put uh, the, um, the words of Jesus, where two or three are gathered in my name, there in their, in their midst. So I understood that, you know, his presence among them uh, touched my heart. And then I think that was my first attraction. And then the, the second one is when I went to uh, Rome to partici participate um, in the um, Gen Fest. It's like a, a word you say of, of, of the folklore movement where all the youth from all over the world, we gathered there at the time. We were like 10,000 young people. There um, understood that really uh, this Jesus dream, may they all be one, is not a utopia. And then it's, it's a, it could be a reality if we really do love one another as, as, as a big human family, right? So it, it was um, such a big ideal that I really felt that I, you know, it's worth to give my life for. So yeah, that's, I think, I, how I understood uh, my vocation. So uh, we, uh, in, in the Folklare, uh, uh, Folklare house where the lay consecrated live, we are four of us there. And then as we are lay people, so we work um, as um, lay people. So you know, our day starts, you know, of course, in our prayer and then the meditation. And then you know, most beautiful moment of our day is going to Mass and personally, you know, having that direct contact with Jesus the Eucharist. And um, so we go to work, and then in the evening we we um, we are you know, available for the communities, and then the formation, and then the retreats, and then the, all other activities in in the movement. But I would you know would like to underline that you know Kara had this inspiration of her vocation, which is very new to to the church, which is lay consecrated. And she got this inspiration when, when she, you know, really early beginning when she uh, visited um, the, the house of Loreto in Italy, where it is believed that um, the angels brought the house of Nazareth to, um, to, to there, Loreto. So there, what she understood that, you know, whatever, she, she, I mean, at the time she didn't even name it what it is, 
But she understood that whatever is going to happen, this you know, family of Nazareth, that was the inspiration of the Focolare. So really, to have his presence among us 24-7, um, so it's um, so in the in the community we we do really uh, live as a family, right? You know, it, it, our faculty community shouldn't be like a like an office or you know any other uh, other places, but family where really um, you know by loving one another to really constantly have um, his presence among us. Of course, we failed a lot of times <laughs> during the day, or you know, but we we have that this also the pact of mercy to see each other new and then to start again. Yeah. So yeah, daily, daily life is you know really I would say move around the presence of Jesus among us. So if I have free time. Yeah, I, I like jogging, <laughs> so you know, I, I just moved to uh, Montreal and I had really, really cold <laughs> so I, and during the winter time I cannot jog, so I go to the gym or, you know, the walking in the nature or, you know, free time, a lot of times we do things together, we, you know, try to watch a movie together or play games, so it's, it's you know, it's, as a normal family would do, then that's also what we do. Um, so, uh, for those who, who have, you know, who feels the calling of, of, of Him, uh, so I would, first of all, I would say keep on loving, you know, that's also my personal experiences. Um, I think God speaks, uh, you know, when you are in loving, right? Const like, love meaning const const constantly giving yourself uh, to others. Um, really simply, you know, seeing Jesus in the others, right? And um, there, I think God speaks loudly. So also, um, as I, I mentioned, you know, this presence of Jesus among us sometimes helps us discern better. So whenever I, w I was having some kind of doubts or difficulty, I would, you know, go back to the folkloric communities and then to, you know, simply share. Um, like, uh, you know, some small episodes when I was still in, in Korea and it was in the university, I started dating, right? And then, so I, but at the, at the same time, I, I had this, you know, desire to give my life to God. So those two things. And then, so I shared, you know, I went back to the, the Focolari community and I shared and I started dating. And then the one of the, the Focolarina at the time just telling me, yeah, that's okay, totally fine, but you know, keep on loving. And it was so beautiful, that answer, you know, I was free, free to, to, to discern, but you know, really continue loving. But there, little by little, the, the voice within me spoke even loudly that, you know, like really, you know, getting married, it's, marriage is such a beautiful uh, vocation, but it was, was not for me. So I, I was, you know, clearly um, understood my vocation. And then also, you, you know, my mom was like furiously against uh, me entering into the Focolare. So like good three years, we, we fought. And then actually that gave me a more chance to really think and discern why I want to. But you know, in, in, even in those you know, difficult moments, I think really what saved me and then discerned better uh, was really try to keep on loving and being out of myself, also living fully in the present moment, but also being helped by, uh, by the community because one of the characteristics of the folkloric movement is really we try to live this collective spirituality, meaning that my personal sanctity is important, but it is, you know, more beautiful to go toward God together. So in this journey of going towards Him, we really try to, to, um, to help one another. Like one of the time, uh, Gera Lubig, even in the beginning, she said, you know, really forget about your own sanctity for the sanctity of the we. So I think, you know, that setting also helps me a lot. You know, like as, as a human being, we always 
fall and make mistakes and then and yet you know walking together with brothers and sisters towards God it's a it's a beautiful beautiful gift and then also the that's the also the gift of the Holy Spirit of this time really that God wants us all to be holy right to um, you know wherever we are you know whenever uh, profession you know whatever vocation we are we are called to to be like him who are you know who are the holy one right so